Hey there everybody. In this video, we're going to learn how to describe accelerated motion. Accelerated motion refers to motion when the velocity of the object is not constant. And so we kind of have to learn a few new rules and descriptors when we get to motion without constant velocity. First, let's recall a few things. First, recall that motion simply means that the position of an object is changing over time. So if something is in one location and it goes to another location, we say that it has moved. And then we can describe the motion of that thing by using the term velocity, which is the rate of change of position over time. In other words, how quickly is the position changing? So something is accelerating when its velocity is changing over time. So the key thing here is velocity changing. Now there are three ways you could be accelerating. Speeding up, slowing down, or changing directions. Typically we only think of speeding up as being acceleration, but the other two are also changes in velocity. We're going to save the changing direction bit for a little, um, little while, and we'll come back to that idea in a later unit. Today we're going to focus on speeding up and slowing down. So what does speeding up look like? Consider this picture that we kind of drew a few weeks ago of an object moving on a number line. And let's just say that the object starts at one meter at zero seconds. So that's this right here. Let's just suppose that a second later it moves to a position of two meters, meaning that it's had a displacement of one meter. If another second later we look at the object and now it's at 4 meters, which means it's traveled 2 meters in the second second, then we can see that the object is speeding up. It's traveling a larger distance during the second second than it did during the first second. During the first second it only traveled 1 meter, during the second second it traveled 2 meters. Maybe during the third second it travels a distance of 4 meters. So you can see between each successive one second picture, the object is moving a farther distance each time. We can express that in a graph of position, notice this is position over here, versus time. So you can see during the first second, the object only travels a meter. During the second second, it travels four meters. And then during the third second, it traveled 8 meters, just like in the pictures we just saw. So notice that when you put those dots in a graph like that, it does not form a straight line like we have been accustomed to. The reason that it doesn't form a straight line is because the velocity is changing. So if we draw a best fit curve for the points on our number line, we would get something that looks more like a parabola. And remember that a parabola means that the position, y-axis, is proportional to the time, or x-axis, squared. So we can say that x is proportional to t squared for something like this. So remember that the velocity is the slope of the position time graph. So since the graph is curved, that means the slope is changing, the velocity is changing. So if we draw a line, like at 2 seconds, um, we can see that it would have a relatively small slope compared to a different line that we would draw at 6 seconds, which has a larger slope. By the way, these lines that I'm drawing are often referred to as tangent lines. You may know that term from geometry. So, during the first second, we had an vo average velocity of 1 meter per second. During the second second, we had an average velocity of 2 meters per second. And then during the third second, we had an average velocity of 4 meters per second. So using both this picture and that picture, we can see that the velocity is increasing over time. That means that it is speeding up. Let's take a look at slowing down. Something that is slowing down is going to travel a smaller distance each successive second. So if we started at 1 meter, after one second, we may be at five meters, meaning we've moved four meters. After the second second, maybe we're at seven meters, traveling two meters forward. And then maybe after the third second, we've gone a distance of one meter. 
So if we put those points on a graph, it might look something more like that. Again, the graph is curvy. It's making a parabola shape. And if we draw tangent lines at um, a couple different points, we can see that we're going from a high slope, or moving quickly, to a low slope, where the object is moving slowly. So this would be an example of something that is slowing down. Another way to analyze the motion of something with changing velocity is to create a graph of velocity versus time. So notice that I've changed from thinking about the position to changing to, to thinking about the velocity. There's a couple different things that we can find from this graph that allow us to better describe the motion of the object. The first is what's referred to as the acceleration. I'm going to draw a best fit line and the initial velocity. So the y-intercept would tell you the starting velocity of the object at time 0 seconds. In this case, the initial velocity would be 1 meter per second, and we would indicate that with the symbol v with the subscript 0, indicating initial. And then we could find the acceleration, which we're going to give the symbol a, simply by finding the slope of the graph, which is change in the y-axis or change in v, over change in the x-axis, which in this case is time. So we can find slope of a line. I'm just going to pick two points, like maybe 5 meters per second at, zero, at 2 seconds, and 1 meter per second at 0 seconds. And so that would give me a change in 4 meters per second over a time of 2 seconds for an acceleration of 2 meters per second per second, which is probably easily written as 2 meters per second squared. So the unit for acceleration typically would just use meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration of the object that we've graphed. We could also write an equation to describe the velocity using our y equals mx plus b format. Velocity is graphed on the y-axis. The slope was 2 meters per second squared. Time is on the x-axis, and then plus the y-intercept of 1 meter per second. Or more generally, I could write it like that. The final velocity of an object equals its initial velocity, plus the acceleration times the time. The other really cool thing that we can find from a graph of velocity versus time is the displacement. Remember that displacement is another term for the change in position. Again, we need a best fit line in order to do that. And the way that we find the displacement is by finding the area under the curve. So what exactly does that mean? What that means is that for any given time interval that you're interested in, for example, let's do between 0 and 1 second, so between 0 and 1 second on the graph, we find the area between the graph that we're given and the horizontal axis, so your x-axis. So I'm going to kind of box that in in red, and then we're just going to find that area right there using the simple geometry rules that we learned previously. Um, so that would be a parallelogram, not a parallelogram, a trapezoid. If you remember the area of a trapezoid formula, great. If not, break it up into a rectangle, which you can find the area of just doing base times height. So the base of this rectangle will be one second. Its height would be one meter per second. The seconds would cancel out, leaving you units a meter, which probably indicates you're finding a displacement. And so that would be an area of one meter. And then do the same thing for the triangle. Do that in orange. Area of a triangle is one half base times height. So that would be one half times a base of one second times a height of two meters per second because this length right here would be 2 meters per second. Again, the seconds cancel out, and that would give me an area of 2 meters. So if you add those areas up, you would get a total area of 3 meters for the time interval between 0 and 1 second. What if we wanted to know about the interval between 1 and 2 seconds? And we would do the same thing. I'm going to box that in in blue. Break it up into a triangle and a rectangle. That triangle is the exact same triangle as the orange one for the red area, 2 meters per second. And that rectangle there would have an area of 3 meters per second. That shouldn't be 
per second, that should be just meters. Let's do a little erasing here. JK. And so adding up 2 meters plus 3 meters would give you 5 meters. And so that would be the displacement between 1 second and 2 seconds. So between 0 and 1 second, it moves 3 meters. Between 1 and 2 seconds, it moves 5 meters. If we want to know how far it moved between 0 and 2 seconds, all we got to do is just add up those two individual pieces. And so adding 3 and 5, obviously we would give me a position change of 8 meters. So let's look at another example. Let's suppose we have this velocity versus time graph for the motion of an object. We want to know its acceleration and how far it's moved after 3 seconds. So first draw a best fit line to represent it. The acceleration is just a slope. Choose any two points in a line you want. I'm going to do the point at 0 meters per second in 2 seconds and 10 meters per second in 0 seconds. Those are easy points to use. So it would give me a change in velocity of negative 10 meters per second over a time of 2 seconds, which will give me an acceleration of negative 5 meters per second squared. So notice it's got a negative slope, so we should get a negative answer for the acceleration. We can find the displacement by finding the area. Again, I'm going to break this up into two figures. I'm going to break it up into a triangle between 0 and 2 seconds. And find the area of that piece, which would be 10 meters. And then between 2 seconds and 3 seconds, I'm going to draw another triangle. I'm going to find the area of that. that area will be negative two and a half meters. So when we go below the x-axis, like this direction, that distance is negative. It's below the x-axis, so make sure we include that negative sign with that height in the area calculation. So adding the two pieces up, I would add 10 meters plus negative two and a half meters which would give me a position change of seven and a half meters. So because my displacement ended up being positive, I know that the net result of all this is that the object has moved forward seven and a half meters between zero seconds and three seconds. Let's see if we can kind of break this graph down just a little bit more. The red area, because it's positive, represents something moving forward, but because the slope is negative during that area, the object is slowing down. So it's moving from a high velocity of 10 meters per second towards zero, it's slowing down. During the bluish area, since it's a negative area, that indicates that the object is moving backwards. And because the velocity's magnitude is getting larger, it's speeding up. So at two seconds, the object comes to a stop and then turns around and moves the other direction. If we were to find the displacement at four seconds. So if we had found this area instead, we probably would have gotten negative 10 meters and figured out that at four seconds the object had returned to its original position. We'll look at more examples of that later on. So here's what we need to be able to do next time in class. Recognize from either a picture, a description, or a graph when objects are speeding up and slowing down, as in when they are actually accelerating. Actually calculate the acceleration, the change in velocity over time or the slope of a graph, and then calculate the displacement of an object by finding the area under a graph. So those are the three things we need to be able to do to describe accelerated motion. And then next time we'll work on explaining how accelerated motion is caused by unbalanced forces. Until then, ta-ta.